Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another daily drop here on TarHillIllustrated.com. I am THI publisher Andrew Jones. And the topic today, Carolina football, the number 24 ranked Tar Heels are 8-2 and two overall, 4-2 and two in the ACC. The Heels have two games left in the regular season at Clemson and at NC State. So the numbers that I'm going to discuss today the course that this offense is on that I'm going to discuss today is going to be significantly challenged here in these last two weeks. And in two weeks, we can come back and revisit this conversation and we'll know a little bit more definitively where this offense will sit historically among UNC's top offenses over the course of time. And that's the discussion here. Is this, or might this be the best offense UNC's ever had and I'm not making a declarative statement. I'm asking an open-ended question that I want you guys to answer. I'm going to present some of the evidence, and I want to know what you guys think. All right. It's the best quarterback in school history, Drake. Sam was phenomenal. Drake's better quarterback. Drake's the best quarterback in college football. I don't, to me, I don't, I, 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 I'm not going to say there's no doubt because some of the other guys out there have incredible years. Bo Nix is having a great year. Penix. Daniels at, F at LSU having great years. Jordan Travis doesn't get enough attention at FSU. I get all that. Drake's the best quarterback. He'll be the number one pick in the draft. Amarian Hampton might be the best running back in college football now. It's possible. Now, Carolina's had a lot more nationally renowned running backs in its history than it has quarterbacks. It didn't really start having great quarterbacks until the 2000s. They had some decent ones before then, but nothing like what they have had here recently. The recent run of QBs has been outstanding for the most part. Running backs is different. You know, Choo Choo was like a five-tool guy, but he was most known as being a running back. That's how he got his, his nickname. Uh, Ken Willard was the number two pick in the draft. He was in the early 60s, a 63 team that went to the Gator Bowl. Don McCauley in 1970 broke OJ, or 71, broke OJ Simpson's all-time single-season rushing record. He's a legend. Uh, Mike Voigt was a two-time ACC player of the year. Famous Amos Lawrence, the second four-time thousand-yard rusher in college football history. Kelvin Bryant would, was on track to win a Heisman or, or strongly compete for it when he tore his knee and win at Georgia Tech in the 81 season. You had Johnson and Johnson, and uh, you had, then you go to Gio Bernard. You had Omari, or excuse me, Javante and Michael, and now you have Omarion. Now, um, none of those guys ended up being recognized as best running back in college football that year, with the exception of Choo Choo. That was a long time ago. So it's possible Omarion is the best running back in college football right now. So if that's the case, it's very, very, very well possible that North Carolina has the best quarterback in the country and the best running back in the country. Then you add they have a surefire NFL wide receiver in Tez Walker, who may not leave this year. He needs more film. He needs a full season, so it's possible and perhaps probable he returns for a full season next year. He's got one more year of eligibility. They have two NFL tight ends for sure, and John Copenhaver and Bryson Nesbitt. Nesbitt is starting to make sick plays every week. His stock is soaring. He's improved his blocking. I would be surprised if he's back. Uh, they have an all-ACC place kicker in Noah Burnett. He's 18 for 19, guys. He was 6 for 6 in a huge game the other day. Hit a 43-yarder to send the game to overtime with a Duke player bearing down on him. And we talked to Noah on Tuesday, and he said he didn't even know he was there because he's so uber-focused. He's in a small tunnel. Sometimes that tunnel was affected last year, and he miss, had some of those misses late in the year. So kudos to him for working through that and having an outstanding season this year. All right, and here's some stats. These stats do not lie, and but I want to revisit this in two weeks to see where these stats are. As of right now, 10 games into the season, the Tar Heels are number three nationally in total offense, 500, almost 521 yards a game. They're number 18 in rushing offense, number eight in passing offense, number eight in scoring at 39.9 points a game. That's not the, the school record, I believe, is 41.1 a couple of years ago. They're number six in third down conversion rate at 51.7%. They're number 18 in red zone offense. And that's with some of the struggles occasionally over the last 
month and a half or so. And they're number three in first downs accumulated. They stay on the field. They give the defense rest. There have been quite a few games where this offense that runs tempo has actually had more time for possession than its opponent. That's an impressive, impressive, impressive thing. So the question to you guys is, how historical is this offense? In two weeks, are we going to talk about this being one of the top 10 offenses in Carolina history? One of the top five offenses in Carolina history? And is there a possibility it's the top offense in Carolina history? The run game is there. The inside runs are there. They run in short yarded situations. Why Omarion didn't get the ball in the red zone more against Duke is beyond me. Okay, they should have given him the ball more. That's a strength in that situation. Okay. They they score a tremendous amount of points. They go through periods when they need to get points, they get points. They're loaded with talent. Uh, Drake's sack numbers are down. He's getting rid of the ball more. He He's really done a better job managing the game this year than last year. He's become more of an NFL quarterback, and he's gone. He played his last home game the other night, no doubt about it. And the number one pick. Carolina's never had the number one pick before. They've had several number twos. And if I think off the top of my head, two of them were offensive players. I mentioned Ken Willard and Trubisky was obviously a quarterback. They've had a couple of defensive guys that went number two as well. LT went number two. I think Julius Peppers went number two. Never had a number one. I think Drake will be their first number one. And he's not going to get a ton of Heisman votes because that's the way that thing rolls. At this point, doesn't matter. You guys know Carolina football. You know Carolina football history. You know when you look at this offense and you compare it to 2020 and you compare it to 2015 and you compare it to some of the other best offenses in school history, you have a fair idea where this probably sits. Of course, you got to see the next two because the two best defenses they're going to play are the next two on this entire schedule are the next two defenses they face. So again, we'll revisit in two weeks, but I want to know what you guys think at this point. Do you see this as top 10, top five, or possibly the best? Let me know what you think. Go ahead and respond on Twitter. You can respond on our Facebook page and of course on our message boards. And the best place to do so on our message boards is our premium message board, the blue heaven uh, football premium message board. And for just $8 and 33 cents a month, you can be a subscriber too, which makes you a Carolina Tar Heel insider. Cause so much more stuff is on premium than you're ever going to get on these podcasts or on free content on our site. Plus the discourse on the, on the, on the premium board is outstanding. There's a lot of people who know a ton and offer tremendous perspective about Carolina football, Carolina basketball, and of course, recruiting, because we hit all four of those things, recruiting for both sports. We hit all four of those things hard. Let me know what you think. Let us know. And then we're going to come back in two weeks and revisit again. I think that'll be fun. So we have, we have us a uh, homework assignment, if you will. Tell me what it is now. And then in two weeks, we'll do it again. And it'll obviously be based on how this team performs over the next two weeks. I think it's top 10 for sure. I think it's top five for sure. That's my opinion right now. I'm not yet willing to say it's the best because we got to see the season play itself out. But I do not ever recall a time when North Carolina had the best quarterback in the country and the best running back in the country. And right now, I think it's in that situation or very close to it. We got to see what Omarion does against these defenses and Drake. But I think they're real close in both those. So let us know what you think, and we'll be back on this specific topic in a couple of weeks. If you like this video, click like. If you think the Tar Heels have a chance these next two games to beat Clemson and NC State, click like. If you're happy with where the offense is overall, click like on this video. Make sure you subscribe. Share it with all your Tar Heel friends. Let them know that we're here. And, of course, hit the notification bell so you get updates every time we upload a video, which is often. I'm AJ, and I'll see you later.